ChatGPT just introduced ChatGPT plugins. In this video, we're gonna be going over exactly what plugins are and why this is absolutely revolutionary for what is to come in the AI world. Okay, so as we know, ChatGPT has been on a mad one recently. They recently dropped ChatGPT4, which so far has been incredible to say the least. So they've now announced ChatGPT plugins. Now let's go through what these plugins are. It is essentially what it says on the tin, right? So there's different third party companies and third party software businesses that will soon be integrated into ChatGPT. So we have the likes of Expedia, Fiscal Note, Instacart, Kayak, Klarna, Milo Family, Open Table, Shopping, Speak, Wolfram, Zapier, um, just to name a few. I'm sure they've got a lot more coming, but these are what they currently have so far. But they also are going to be having two plugins themselves, which is going to be a GPT web browser and a code interpreter. And they've also open sourced the code for a knowledge base retrieval plugin, which can be self hosted by any developer with the information with which they'd like to augment chat GPT. So this is currently on a waitlist only, and they have prioritized a small number of developers in the chat GPT user base. But they they are planning on rolling this out on the larger scale over time. So let's jump into the plugins. Let's see what they can do and let's get a little example of how they work. So what users are going to be able to do soon is come on over to ChatGPT and access these different plugins. So there's going to be a plugin store where you can come and pretty much install these different plugins. In this case, they're using Wolfram, they're using Instacart and they're using OpenTable. So we're going to see obviously tons more of these different plugins getting used and created. And there's a huge business opportunity there for anyone that can get ahead of the curve and start creating chat GPT plugins. So let's see how this is going to work. You can pretty much come on to chat GPT and you put in a prompt as normal. So in this case, they're saying that they're looking to eat vegan food in San Francisco and could chat GPT provide a great restaurant suggestion for Saturday and a simple recipe for Sunday. So just the ingredients. They're then asking the AI to create the calories for the recipe using Wolfram Alpha and order the ingredients on Instacart. ChatGPT is then going to use OpenTable to find the restaurant that they've asked for on the Saturday. And you can then see the plugin kicks in and it recommends Green's restaurant. And it's also provided the recipe for the Sunday. Now using the Wolfram plugin, it's now going to calculate the calories that is in that recipe. So you can see here, all these plugins keep kicking in and it's all done for a single prompt. So really, this is just ridiculous that he can now order all the ingredients using Instacart. The list with the cart has already been made and it's literally been linked inside of ChatGPT. So it makes it super, super simple for us to now automate a process just like that. There you just saw them going through the Instacart checkout with all those pieces already added to the cart. Now to me, that's insane. The fact that we can now have plugins, you know, it mentioned here, there's gonna be an Expedia plugin for example so if we can now book our trips and our holidays based off of a prompt where we said hey i want to go to europe for two weeks i have this much budget i like staying in these sort of places i eat this type of food where can you recommend expedia can now kick in we can now book our holidays with a single prompt it can give us the best prices it can find us the cheapest flights i don't know where this is going to end up but i really really do like the idea of plugins i also like it from a business perspective which we obviously care a lot about on this channel where we could be creating these plugins and integrating them into chat gpt and we have the first mover advantage so if you're smart you can definitely definitely capitalize on different plugins here and make a business out of it next up we have chat gpt browsing so this is quite interesting before we've had chat gpt not actually give us up-to-date accurate information because it has only been trained up to a certain date but with browsing we have chat gpt now able to browse the internet for us on our behalf here you go it says allowing the language models to read information from the internet strictly expands the amount of content they can discuss going beyond the training corpus to fresh information from the present day now this has been a big problem with chat gpt a lot of people aren't getting up-to-date information and the fact that we can now send it off as our own personal assistant to go and read the many blogs and articles on google and find the information way quicker than we could that is absolutely huge so here's an example of the kind of experience that browsing opens up to chat gpt users that previously would have had the model politely point out that its training data didn't include enough information to let it answer this example in which chat gpt retrieves recent information about the latest oscars and then performs now familiar chat gpt poetry feats is one way browsing can be an additive experience so let's watch this example here we can see that the browsing model has been activated at the top and they've now asked gpt the question how do this year's oscars winners compare to recently released movies for box office sales 
ChatGPT is now browsing the web. It doesn't know up-to-date information. It hasn't been traded at that point, but it now can browse the internet. So you can see it's searching exactly that question and it's clicking on these different links. Uh, it then says it's reading the content and then it's searching for more because obviously it hasn't found the answers. It's just going to shop around the internet, essentially going on to different articles and reading those articles until it finds accurate and correct information for us. So it's then come back and it's finished its browsing. The 2023 Oscar winner for the best picture, everything, everywhere, all at once, earned 100 million million at the box office so we can see it's now got the information for us it's done all the heavy lifting and all we've done is ask it for the questions now this is the same as us googling but instead of us having to go through and browse ourselves we now have the answers in a matter of seconds without any work involved from us you can actually hover over different answers so you can see that one has a two next to it if that if you hover over that two it shows you where the information was pulled from so what article so this is going to be really good for cross-referencing as well and making sure that you can actually go to the source if you did want to read up more so with browsing it's not going to just browse everything it only browses when it doesn't know the answer which is quite scary really but if you went and said when was the first cost and when was it held it's already been trained on that data so it actually comes back with a really good answer because it already knows it doesn't need to activate the browsing feature but this is going to be huge for chat gpt because it now gives us up-to-date information and it doesn't confine to chat gpt to the data that it knows so we now essentially have an ai that can not only give us accurate information but it can also go out and learn what it doesn't know which uh could be the start of something scary and with that said, ChatGPT is actually hiring a kill switch engineer. Now they're paying 300 to 500,000 per year. And all you need to be able to do is be able to throw a bucket of water onto the server if ChatGPT goes off the deep end and starts overthrowing countries. Now, obviously this is a joke, but this does look like where we're heading because ChatGPT can now go learn by itself. So who knows what's to come? Hopefully this video helped you understand the changes that are coming up in ChatGPT very, very soon. I cannot wait to get started, especially with the plugins. Those look super interesting. And I'm sure we're gonna save so much more time using those if this video helped you in any way smash a like on the video subscribe to the channel we talk about so many different ways and how you can integrate ai into your business if you do have any questions leave them down below in the comments and i'll get back to you and answer them there thanks again for watching guys i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye